Okay, let me explain. Just a quick rundown before we start. Uh, I'm not representing this as me anymore because it's more of a mascot and a character, and I just don't really want to. So I'm just this random bear that I have. Uh, this is actually just a bear that I had actually since I was like just born, which is why it's me. So if I talk through this, it's me. If I talk through that, it's a character mascot. That's why if I ever make update videos, I'll probably just be this guy. Anyway, on to the video. It's him out of The plush collection, something that quite literally every plush YouTuber does because they need a video. I figured I'd go over through all my plushes and give a little bit of detail about them that are FNAF related, because that's what most people care about. Fair warning, I'm not gonna be showing outdated customs, broken, destroyed things, or original characters because, well, okay, original, like, invade the plush first characters. Things like Scorch still apply because they are still FNAF characters. All right, we're gonna go in order of wave, which I don't usually do when I do these videos, so we... We're starting off with Sanchi. Here's Freddy. This is more specifically the Fat Mojo release of Freddy. You see, back when Sanchi uh, was being overall with Overstock, they assisted Fat Mojo to make a set of, the set of three for them, which would be Freddy, Bonnie, and Foxy. The Freddy, Bonnie, and Foxy I own are actually this release. The only major damage he surfaced is this big tear on his back, which has been sewn. And besides that, there's just a couple little stains on him, but I still love him. Next up is Bonnie. Out of the three, he's definitely in the best condition. I still really like this guy, and he's uh, one of my more like Sanchi plushies. Actually, he's probably my favorite, all things considered. And now we go to Foxy. Foxy's in decent condition outside of a couple little stains, and uh, the only reason I have it is because his eye has a little pin in it because the eye patch isn't really stuck very well. And these are the first three characters I got. All a part of the Fat Mojo box set, and I think they were like $50 on Amazon. And then we move to later down the road. Here's Chica. Only damage she sustained is that little mark on her head, but obviously this isn't the Fat Mojo release because by the time these were released, they didn't need Fat Mojo to mass produce them anymore because they bought a lot of warehouse space. And until the restocks, they probably weren't using much of it. Chica's still fantastic. I love her cupcake. The magnet is really cool. The bib's well done. Everything just looks snazzy. And she doesn't look like this. And then we got Golden Freddy. I bought both of these together, and Golden Freddy has a little bit of damage. His foot toured tw tw right there, but it's been sewed, obviously, so it's all good now. Only gripe I have with this in the next plush I'm gonna show. I hate that the eyes are like that, but I get that's how it looked like in the medium spread, I guess. And now, after all these years, after like, actually I think it was like six months ago, I got this guy. After I heard he wasn't gonna be restocked, I panic bought him and it was like 60 bucks, which, you know, sounds like a lot, but I mean, I paid $50 for the three of those individually. Well, I didn't, they were Christmas gifts, but shut up. Either way, all things considered, since this thing was only $60, the only real issue is his hat is a little in bad condition around the rim. But other than that, good plushie. Super happy to finally add Fredbear to my collection. So now that we have the collection of all six Sanchi plushies out of the way, let's go to wave one. Specifically by Funko. I'm gonna start off with the duplicates I have of Funko's wave one because, well, they're my duplicates. I have all four of these and they're all very recent, so none of them are really have any damage on them at all. I bought them, one, for emergency customs just in case I needed to make some, and two, I bought them just because I wanted to have the original four Funko ones that weren't made into customs already. These were also the same ones that were all used in the Withered's time travel videos, so that was fun. And we have the Oddball a bunch, not a dupe, not an exclusive, it's Fun Time Foxy! This one I believe had to be bought online because I couldn't find it anywhere. Fun fact, uh, Funko used to do this thing where they would switch out a character in the box to put the exclusive in, and Funtime Foxy was the one that met this fate in Wave 1. So you could only find her at Toys R Us. I mean, not the case now, but back then it was. She's very cool and doesn't have any major damage. Sadly, I don't have a completely in condition Golden Freddy from Walmart, but I do have the other two. Here's Shadow Freddy. One of the reasons why I love this character so much is this plushie. I love this plushie a lot, and it's great. Hot Topic exclusive. There were six in the box when I went there, and I left with one. I regret not buying the other five, because these things are worth like $300 now. Though I hope I'm sure I made some kid happy by leaving them there. Or I just went to scalpers. And here's the GameStop exclusive Toy Freddy. I still really love this guy. I just wish his colors were actually Toy Freddy's colors. For some reason, they made him darker, but other than that, the plush looks really great. His hat has suffered damage over time, though, sadly, so it's peeling a little bit. I mean, these things are like, what, five, four years old? It's the time. Time exists. Time, time sucks. And now we move on to... Uh, I'm not certain when the Good Stuff plushies came out, but... I have this one. Just kind of a 
Random Freddy. I called him Bretto in a video. He goes there. I don't know if this really counts as wave one, but either way, here's 16 inch Freddy. Yeah, I just bought Freddy. I kind of miss these a little bit, honestly. The only ones they still sell are the blacklight ones, and I kind of wish they'd go back and do ones like Springtrap or... I don't know, BB. Next up's Funko Wave 2. Here yeah, we're starting off in the main set with Nightmare Freddy. I have a gripe with this one, mostly because they made him Freddy's original colors, which doesn't make sense considering Good Toy Freddy and Nightmare Freddy's colors are quite literally flipped. But other than that, I really like this guy. Yeah, the weathering makes no sense, but it's fun. The teeth are cool, and I wish they'd do these teeth more. I think they're fun. Overall, a very fun plush. Fun, 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 fun. Okay, next up is Nightmare Foxy. I also really like this guy. He's also a really fun plush. I love this guy. He's great. Uh, nothing really wrong with him. Outside of, I guess, maybe, like... Get him in a darker color, I guess. The feet are a little strange, since he doesn't have pants, but he's okay. And then we have quite literally one of the best fan plushies ever. It is quite literally perfect in every single way. I love Toy Chica so much. She is so cute and she looks great. I literally have no complaints about this thing. 10 out of 10. There's the plush no one cares about, but you know, it's, it's Toy Cupcake. Okay, I shouldn't throw all that shame. If you don't own Sanji Chica, it's definitely not a bad plush. And I'm happy they didn't just make FNAF 1 Cupcake, because that would have been arbitrarily disappointing. It's nice to have some Toy Cupcake crap as much as I don't care about Toy Cupcake. Next up, we have the puppet. I really like the puppet. Too bad mine got completely damaged in the process of filming a video. Yeah, in the middle of making a music video that was never released, I accidentally got a lot of sticky tape glue on their arms, and the puppet is now covered in felt. Maybe I'll get one to replace it one day, but for now, this is just what I'm sticking with. I mean, come on, that mask is like a picture-perfect quality control mask. Like, I can't just shoot for that. And also one of the plushies I have a little complaint with, Springtrap. I mean, obviously I fixed it up in the Funko uh, video I did. You should have watched that, by the way. Uh, I still really like this guy a lot. Minus maybe a couple of the colors could be better, and I do wish his eyes were actually silver instead of, like, this weird yellow color. Which, oddly enough, I think inspired the Help Wanted design, but I'm not gonna try it. I like him. Only damage I think he suffered is his wire came off almost, and so I had to hot glue it back down if the camera would focus. Nope, it's just not going to. And I had to mark her in this little embroidered spot because it uh, just kind of undid itself and then I just finished the job. He's good. And now we move on to exclusives. I'm gonna go in the order of what I think they were discovered in and I think Mangle was discovered first. You heard me right, I said Mangle. I've been wrong all these years. I know this is Mangle. I don't care though, I'm still calling it Nightmare Mangle in videos. <laughs> like I did, I proved it in my uh, video that you should want to talk about in there. Uh, I still like Mangle. It's a good plushie. I like the teeth. I think for being Mangle it does its job, I just wish there was a little more detail put into it, but I think if Funko did go back and remake this, they would add the second head, because they've done things like Bon Bon and the Parrot, but you know, it's good. The lack of hair tuft still bugs me though. Alright, I'm gonna go on a whim and say Nightmare Cupcake was the next one people discovered. Nightmare Cupcake was exclusive to GameStop, and honest to god I love this stupid little thing. It has these weird printed iron-on mouth that I wish they'd actually add to more plushies. It's a nice material, and I think it makes the teeth look really nice. I think he has a dumb little face, and for being Nightmare Cupcake, it does its job perfectly. Beautiful little guy. I think next one is Toy Bonnie. Obviously, Toy Bonnie has a lot of problems. I improved in that video, but it's okay. I think it's cute, it's got its own charms, but it also doesn't really look like Toy Bonnie that much. I'd say it is probably the opposite of Toy Chica, but I still like it. Good boy. Also, he was Hot Topic. I forgot to mention that. Alright, just kind of going on a whim at this point. Phantom Fox, he was a Target exclusive. I don't like this plush. Outside of the material used, it looks nothing like Phantom Foxy. It doesn't have the arm. It's not orange. But then again, this is back when Funko thought uh, Greek colors like these were acceptable. Like, what? And I, good boy, but he's okay. And last but not least for exclusives, we have Nightmare Bonnie. Not my original Nightmare Bonnie, actually. The original one had a crazed eye, which actually uh, made it go into his personality. That uh, plush has since been replaced by this one, which I just think looks better overall. The other one was actually used for a custom. This guy was a Toys R Us exclusive, and his lack of withering plus uh, his fact that he's purple for some reason, instead of blue, like Nightmare Bonnie is, is kind of strange, but I like his face. He's nice. Oh yeah, one more thing. This is the first wave where I actually have duplicates of some things. First off, I have a duplicate spring trap. Uh, you can kind of tell which one's which, thankfully, by the face. Um, but I like this guy, uh, all things considered. I'm not going to replace him, though, because I still like my the face on mine a lot better. 
This is mostly just one that's in case I need customs. I just kind of have it. And then last but not least, we have a duplicate Nightmare Pony. This dude is actually still in really good condition, and I think he actually looks a little bit better than my other one, but I still like this guy, and I just prefer the other one more. Um, very shiny, very new looking, uh, very unused, but I just kind of got this given to me, so I just have an extra one. E. There he is. And now, welcome to Wave Sister Location! I'm not calling it Wave 3, because it was called FNAF Sister Location Plushies. Even though the second wave was just called FNAF Plush, but... <laughs> First part is the main line of Wave 3 is Baby! And now, obviously, we all know the scandal of how the prototype plushies look miles better than the final ones, with just, uh, the adding of a couple details. But outside of that, I still really like Baby. I think her pattern is nice, and while, like, they could have done the marshmallow body, it could have also been good stuff. And we don't want that. I like her. She's cool. The printing is minimal on her. Next up, we have Funtime Foxy, and the printing is definitely, uh, more shown on this thing. And it's in some of the weirdest spots, too. Like, they couldn't have also just printed the hands and feet. Like, why couldn't they just go all out? I know the scandal was all budget reasons, but I still like the pattern on it, despite the printing. The printing does not bug me nearly as much as it used to. I just like the plushy designs for the plushy designs. If it's printed, oh well. Plus, at this point, I can't complain about printing if I use markers on my customs. Next up is Funtime Freddy. I love this guy still. While he has had a couple controversial things said about him, I know people don't really like this plushie that much, I like him. His printing's subpar, and actually this isn't my first Funtime Freddy, this one is just the second one I got, because I was gonna make this one into a custom, but then I realized this one was in much better shape than my old one, so I just swapped it out. I think it's the first time I'm publicly sharing that information, actually. Bon Bon is Bon Bon, and you know what? He's got his charms. Next up we have Ballora, and you know, I don't mind Ballora as much as I used to. She's got her charms, but I still wish that we got the, the you know, the prototype instead of this one. But despite all that, she's fine. And like I said, she has her charm. And last but not least in the main wave, we have Ennard. I still like Ennard. I know some people say the good stuff one's better, and I look at them like they're a lunatic, but, you know, I like Ennard a lot. I think the way they did his body is really unique, even if I wish they would've went a little more out with it. This mask looks okay, despite the fact that they didn't color in the back for some reason, but other than that, good guy. Oh yeah, um, I stuffed the hat. I think a lot of people did that, but if you haven't, you probably should, because, uh, it's really not that hard, you just gotta kinda get your figure down there and stuff it. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. If you're like me and you use Funtime Freddy for a lot of your customs, uh, you'll have a lot of spare bonbons lying around. This isn't even all of them, I know it. I know at some point there were at the very least nine. And on top of that, there he is, Black Eye Entered, the re-release of Entered with a black eye. I don't know why they did this. I actually think the one without the black eye looks better, but for some reason they did this. It's, it's Black Eye Ennard. Don't really have much else to say other than that. Oh yeah, one thing I did with actually both my Ennards is I colored in the eye ring all the way, because if you notice on the actual plush, for some reason they only colored it like three-fourths of the way, which is still really confusing to me. I don't know why they did it like that. And now we move on to exclusives. First up, we have the exclusive bonnet. Bonnet is pink, and it has no legs, and it's got a pink cottontail, which I really like. Also, I forgot to mention, why do you not have a cottontail? You literally have a cottontail in the game. But yet, FNAF 1 Bonnie has one, so why didn't it give you one? But yeah, um, also it makes less sense for her to even have one either, whatever. Cottontail, cottontail. It's cool. Um, I like this plushie, it looks a little derpy, but other than that, yeah. It's good. I like it. And then, you know, I get flashbacks to all the, the fake Bon Bon plush leaks. I think we got like four of those and got fooled by all of them. And next up, we have Exotic Butters from Hot Topic. Outside of the basket color, I think this dude's actually perfect. I think it's really nice having a little novelty. There's no different than, from this existing than the cupcake existing. And on top of that, it's got even better features since you can take out the butters and they got Velcro. I wish, miss when Funko did creative influence of stuff like this. This stuff is cool. I have two. Don't worry, I know this one's the original one because I took the duplicate one and I got it and I uh, marked the bottom of all the butters. So I know that this is the dupe. Also, there's a smiley face in the basket. So if I ever get around to selling this one one day, uh. Someone's gonna have a smile on their basket. Next up is the Target exclusive, I think? I don't think it was ever marked with Target exclusivity, but uh, well bit. I think this is when Funko really started to improve on the printing. It looks miles better here than it does on Funtime Foxy. And yeah, as much as I don't really care about well bit as a character, this plush is still really nice. Good guy, good guy, good gal. Is well bit a guy or a girl? I don't know. <laughs> 
wave four. This is the Twisted Ones wave. Funko's worst one. Here's Twisted Freddy. Um, I like this guy. Okay, this is just gonna basically go for all of them. I think the printing looks really, really bad on these guys. It's not filled in correctly. There's white spots everywhere, and it's just overall really bad looking. But the plush designs look pretty good. I think that they tried here. Except for the mouths, why did they do this? Like, I get it. You want to make them different from the nightmares, and you want to make them scarier. But doing this ain't the answer. Like, you're telling me that they really couldn't have just, like, printed some stuff on, like, with Nightmare Cupcake, or, like, with the other... Like, you just you didn't have to do this. Just, it just looks it just looks wrong, especially from the side. Like, what? Twisted Bonnie overall definitely looks better than Twisted Freddy, but the ears stick out like a sore thumb and look weird. Like, what? That's two different shades of purple. The mouth looks really bad. Like, what is that? But the rest of it looks pretty good. The printing on the withering looks pretty good on this guy, and I like the spikes. They're subtle, and they're really hard to notice, but they're there, and I appreciate them. Better, but still not great. Next up is Twisted Chica, and I don't hate this one as much as many people did. I like what they did with the cupcake. I think that was cool. Um, the fire is cool. The balloon head doesn't bug me as much as it does some people, but I think the only reason it looks like that way is because of this mouth. Compared to Twisted Freddy, actually, I think the printing looks decent on this one. Uh, the bib looks bad, though. I'm just gonna, just gonna throw that out there. All right, this one's uh, subjectively my favorite. It doesn't look good, but come on. It's Twisted Foxy. You look stupid. Like, why, what even is that? Is that just a beehive now? I don't like them, but I love them at the same time. On an objective sense, the thing looks terrible. I mean, it's just like uneven printing everywhere. It, it, like, the back is the only part that really looks that great. Uh, the withering is fine, but the hand makes no sense since there's no hook there. And it's, it's a bigger slab in the face when you consider the most recent wave has hooks for Foxy's hand. Like, you really couldn't make that decision like four waves ago, Funko. I think the mouth looks the best on this one compared to the, out of the four, because at least Foxy has a large snout, so it kind of makes a little more sense, but other than that, bad, but subjectively, I like it. Now, what we have, what is probably the objectively and subjectively best one, the wolf. Uh, it's under-detailed, but I think what they did looks nice. The glitch pattern looks cool, even if it's just kind of like a solid cutoff here. I like the fur coat. This is really nice. I don't think Funko's done this on a plush ever since then. Uh, outside of the lack of detail and what I wish they did more of, like add things like a belly and maybe make this a little more withered and crossy ovary instead of just one line. Also, that's really annoying. That is, oh my god, I just realized how much that sticks out. You really couldn't have just made the butt piece to have fun. It's good, I guess. Uh, my favorite one, but... Here's Theodore. I mean, like, I don't really got much to say about Theodore. It's good, and it's probably objectively the best one in the wave, but it's Theodore, I don't really care. Only thing I have to say is that I fixed the teeth because it looked bad and I cut them because I think this looks way better than the weird buck tooth they gave him. Um, other than that though, he's good. No printing on him, oddly enough. Do I even need to say what this looks like? I'm kidding, you can sit up here, but I don't like you. Just what went wrong here? The wheels are flat and not 3D. They're, the printing just doesn't look good. And is this supposed to look like a horse? This looks like a like a letter. Like, I'm serious. This looks like a number. Like, outline that. That looks like a number. Where are its legs? It looks dumb and it's easy to choke so I can do that. Bad. Next up, we have uh, the black lights. I got one. I bought it because at least I can say I own a piece of blacklight merch, but like, I still don't even own a blacklight, so really, why did I buy this? Like, you can use it for gags to make it look rotten, I guess, but it's. Have they kind of done like Golden Cupcake or something? At least make recolors that make sense. I guess they were good for customs. Next up is Balloon Boy! I like this guy. He was a Hot Top exclusive, so he was a fun plushie, and despite the printing, I think it actually looks really good on this guy. He fits with the body type of all the other humanoid characters. I like his little dangly feet. All the right colors outside of the skin that looks weirdly orange. I love his dumb face. BB will forever go down as one of the biggest memes of FNAF plushies, so, you know, I, 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 I appreciate him for that. Oh yeah, I got two duplicates I'm gonna turn into custom, so, yeah. Three of the gremlins. 
I just realized basically all the dupes are next to each other except for Nightmare Bonnie. And next up, we have my arbitrarily most underwhelming wave. I'll provide my thoughts at the end because I have some hot takes. Let's move into the first one. Me. Here's Rockstar Freddy. Yes, he's a teddy. And you know what? I don't mind him. I think he looks good. Uh, all of FNAF's plushies look good. They were quite a return to form after the twisted ones, and I can totally understand why people think that. His Iron On Star is, uh, is something I really like. It's a new choice, and I like it. I don't think they should have embroidered it. I think it looks cool like this. His face looks a little weird, but you know, it's a different style, and I appreciate when Funko does something unique. I like him. Foxy's a little bit of a different story. Like, where are his teeth? Like, Rockstar Foxy arguably has the most teeth out of all the Foxies you've made. Why does he have no teeth? Okay, I'm talking about animatronic Foxies. I'm not talking about Nightmare Foxy. Like, of course that dude has the most teeth. I do like the parrot. It's just kind of Bon Bon, but as the parrot. I think it's neat how they keep a consistency there. His face is just kind of cutesy and not what I think of when I think of Rockstar Foxy. His knee pads are printed for some reason, which I guess maybe it's because it was such a thin spot, but like, really? Especially when Rockstar Freddy's are not printed? I don't know. Just also really underwhelming. And then we have Lefty. I like Lefty. Considering that, you know, with Rockstar Freddy, I think this is the best they could have done, really. Outside of the eye. You can tell I colored in. I did that because I don't think the white thing looks good. I think it looks stupid. If they would have done like a streak or something. All right, maybe I can understand, but they literally just took the one from the left eye and put it on the right eye and, or, well, you get the point. They put it on that eye and it looked weird, which is the same exact reason I colored it in. Anyway, yeah, then that looks good. Other than I think that he's a little too light, I think he looks good. And we got Helpy. Um, outside of the face looking a little strange for some reason. Why do they use, like, Foxy's nose, for example? His buttons are printed, which is just an odd choice in my eyes. He doesn't really look all that cute. He kind of looks more like a donkey. Like, if you squish his face out, it's pretty long. Like, like, long like that. I don't know why, considering the fact that they had a, like, template for a short, short and snouted Freddy that looked good. They went with this. Nothing offensive, but just really not what I think of when I think of a healthy plushie. And now we got the oddball, El Chip. Neither of his other fun time, uh, what was the name of it? Posh Pizzeria, that was the name of them. Neither of his Posh Pizzeria friends were made, but he was made. So I guess, yeah, we got Chipper merch, but he's, uh, he's El Chip, I mean, what'd you expect? I like the way he looks, honestly. I know a lot of people had some strange quality control issues with him, but mine obviously looks pretty good. His beaver tail's a neat idea. I do kind of wish they did some cross stitching on it though. The colors are nice. The sombrero is underwhelming, but it looks fine for what you want it to be. I mean, a sombrero is a lot more complicated than a top hat, but it is kind of annoying how when you sit him upright, you really can't see the detail under his sombrero unless you pull it up, and then that just looks weird. And even if it didn't, it doesn't stay. Again, just kind of underwhelming. Next up, we have the first of the Meteorical Melodies, Pig Patch. I don't mind Pig Patch. I think for Pig Patch, it's perfect, basically. No real complaints. Could have made this 3D, but eh, it's fine. You don't really see the back of Pig Patch anyway. And you got Orville. I don't like him. I don't know, I just like, it's cute, but it looks kind of dumb. His face is super poofy for some reason, and I can't tell if it's because they needed to put the trunk on, but they had Pig Patch's snout fit, which those are about the same size and width anyway, so like, what gives? I think a long face for an elephant makes more sense instead of a squished poof one, but eh. Other than that, nothing too offensive about it. It's got everything El Orville had and needed. I don't know. This looks like this though, why? Maybe it's just mine, but I feel like this flower is really low. Next up, we're moving on to exclusives. First up, we have Happy Frog, a Walmart exclusive of two. Um, you know what? I actually like Happy Frog. It's my favorite mediocre. It's honestly my second favorite plush in this wave. It looks like Happy Frog and it's pretty cute. Nothing offensive about it. It's good for what it is. It's Happy Frog. And then what's probably my third favorite blush in this wave? Mr. Hippo. Yeah, nothing really too offensive about him either. He's also a Walmart exclusive, and you know, he looks like Mr. Hippo. I don't think I can find anything really wrong with him. You see, what especially confuses me is why could they put his snout, like his flower high up, but not Orville's? Maybe again, it's just a quality control thing, but like, I don't get that. And there we go. Next up, we have the uh, next exclusive, which came out way after the whole wave, Candy Cadet. This plush sucks. Outside of uh, the material used, which is cool, it there's a weird pattern. If you wanna see what I think, go watch Animatronics video. She has a pretty good idea of what I think the pattern would look like, or should look like. 
not even mentioning the weird amount of detail on his lower part and the weird lack of it on everything else, his hands aren't detailed. They're flat and they're not even printed on the back. Like, really? You couldn't have printed that? Just like... And that's not even the worst part either. Well, actually, no, that is the worst part, but they're still all... They didn't print that either. Just, just why? Why does this exist? It doesn't even look good. The only reason I like it more than Stanley is it actually is in the games and not a book character. So it has more relevance than Stanley does. Now I know the next plush technically released during the FNAF 6 wave. I'm just gonna include it separate. So I can talk about my facts and opinions about why I don't like the FNAF 6 wave. It's pretty plain and simple. The character choices. Like, I'm not even gonna talk about how they didn't make the scraps. Cause that's already offensive enough. But why did you make two of the rock stars and four of the mediocres. You really couldn't have just kicked out Foxy and put in Ned Bear? Or you kicked out all these four and put in Bonnie and Chica? Here's my ideal way for FNAF 6. Get all these guys out of here. You can, and, and El Chip too. As much as I like El Chip, he doesn't really need to be here. You can keep these four, add Rockstar Bonnie and Rockstar Chica, and then make these three Scrap Baby, Molten Freddy, and Scrap Trap. That would have been fine! Maybe you could have even just done that and made this L chip. But why do we have such an incomplete wave? As much as I like the mediocres, I care about the Rockstar characters way more. And on top of that, they couldn't even make the scraps. The only one we got is Lefty, and let's be honest, it's because it's recolor. <sighs> we still don't have the scraps even after all these years. That's like if they made Sister Location and like... <laughs> Well, what if they made Sister Location, and then out of the main wave, they made Baby, Ballora, Yendo, and Lulbit? Like, why? And then you only release Funtime Freddy exclusive, and you just never come out with Foxy. Just never. Like, why? This wave just angers me, because, like, I don't use any of these characters as main characters in videos, and granted, even the customs of the scraps I don't use, but at least I could have thought about it. Ugh. This wave just angers me. Okay, time to move on to good things now. We For what I'm assuming was the release of Help Wanted? Here's Spring Bonnie, and sadly, she, he, I am I made her a she in my series, so I'm just gonna refer to it as a she. I, um, you know, it suffered the same fate as Funtime Freddy. My original one was made into a custom, which I'll show off later, but yeah, sadly, this is the second edition of Spring Bonnie. And I can't even say sadly, because honestly, this one looks better. It's in better condition, it's got a better looking face, I just think that this Spring Bonnie looks better overall. So yeah, I like her a lot. Also, hey, to all the people that tell me, you why is Spring Bonnie a woman in a series? It's supposed to be a guy. Look at this quote from FNAF World. Quite literally look at it. Who cares? It's a rabbit. Enjoy the funny British rabbit. Shut up. I have a dupe of her as well, which I currently don't have a planned custom for, but we'll see. All right, and time to move on to arguably the most controversial wave, Security Breach. I cannot show you the original release of these plushies because I said no, and I customized them to make them look better because they already had scratchy materials that sucked anyway. I have a dupe Vanny, but this is the only of the original ones I got a dupe of. See what I mean? How can you take that face seriously in videos? Not saying mine, it's much more serious, but at least it looks like Vanny. This looks like a rabbit with FNAF proportions. First up is Glamrock Freddy, and honestly, I like Glamrock Freddy. Comparing the original plush, it's underwhelming, but I'm just gonna critique them based on my customs because, eh. I think I did a good job on Glamrock Freddy. I think uh, all the missing details that would be there are now here, so I think I like him a lot. And it still looks like a Funko product. It's just good Funko product. Next up, we have Montgomery Gator. He didn't really need much changing, so that's why I didn't change him much. I only added a little bit on his belly and I fixed up his mohawk. So yeah, I actually really like the original release of Montgomery, just a couple wrong things with them. Glamrock Chica quite literally had two fixes. I added earrings and I uh, fixed her beak. Honestly, the original Glamrock Chica plush is really cute. I just hate the fact that it has the bad material on it. Next up is Roxanne, which honestly, I really like my Roxanne. The only thing I kind of regret doing is adding these little squiggles on the arms because I don't want to add on the legs. I think it looks bad, honestly, but it's too late for that now. I think my Roxanne looks nice, and I think it actually looks more like Roxanne than the original release. Also, the hair is just much more satisfying to look at. Good plushie. See, part of me wonders in this wave if maybe the reason why they couldn't make these look good is because the patterns were too expensive, like things like they gave Glamrock Chica's legs and Monty's pants, but... Why didn't they give that to Roxanne or Freddy then? Okay, I guess Freddy because, duh, he doesn't have them, but Roxanne does. I don't know, maybe Funko got the curly concept designs, which look nothing like the final, which would really suck if that were the case. But anyway, last but not least, we got Vanny. I wanted to make her look a lot more like my Glitch Trap custom because, you know, 
it's glitch trap and Vine Vanny is also, you know, a rabbit suit. Outside of the ears, which I think were a little weird looking because, you know, they don't bend down all the time like I want them to, they still look fine. I like this custom. I think it looks a lot more like Vanny from the games and I think it does her more justice in the original one could because like, okay, compare this to that. Which one looks more like Danny? And now we move on to the last four single release exclusives up to date. And you know what? I'm going to be honest here. I really like single release exclusives. I hope they keep doing them because they're a lot of fun. And I like getting new plushies every once in a while that are just random characters we don't have. Especially some of the ones like Phantom BB we got. Speaking of which, I'm not showing him off first because he was like the third one. Next up is Security Puppet. And look at this little guy. He's so cute. I hate that he has the scratchy material, but you touch his box so you don't really feel that. Also, he was a Hot Topic exclusive, which was pretty cool to get another one of these after quite a while. Actually, what am I saying? The last one was Hot Topic exclusive before this. I'm an idiot. I think the face looks nice, and it fixed the issue with the original puppet a lot of people had, and gave it a felt mask instead of, you know, the weird iron-on one, even if I liked that one. This does objectively look a lot cleaner. Also, it's got a little bell. Very cute. It's another single release, and you know what? Comparably to the Candy Cadet... It still at least has lore relevance, and at least it looks good. And if you watched my original review, you would know I also have a duplicate of the security puppet. Look at him. Next up is Freddy Frostbear. He's a Walmart exclusive. We got him at Christmas of 2020, and he looks fantastic for Frostbear. We got really no printing on him. That was unnecessary, minus the holly, but like, eh, I can pass that. It's just a random little detail on the hat. For some reason, the hat was made out of the eyebrow material, which really confused me, but other than that, I like him. His pattern, his design is really nice. And considering he's our first FNAF AR plushie, I think he looks nice. Next up, another Hot Topic exclusive, Phantom BB. Yeah, this one was definitely a shock, and I never thought we were ever going to get old plushies again. But a couple things about this plush. First off, a scratch material is back. Yeah, it really sucks, but you know, Phantom BB is dirty anyway, so it kind of makes sense to him to be a kind of grimy material. I mean, it's either this or Phantom Foxies, which Phantom Foxies wasn't bad, admittedly. It just it was weird. I like him though. Phantom BB's cool. And last but not least, Chocolate Bonnie. Uh, for Easter of 2021, we got this guy, and I think he also looks really nice. He was also a Walmart exclusive, and I think the only new material on this thing was for some reason the, like, whatever material they use, like, for this bow is, like, super thick. It's really malleable and almost feels like a plastic. Either way though, good plushie. Good pattern. I think it, well, it certainly looks like Chocolate Bonnie. So there we go, we're fully updated on the plushies from the start to the end of Funko's run. Or, not the start to the end, the start to the current. And honestly, overall, I really like the FNAF plushies. Oh yeah, also Sanchez and that one good stuff one. Those are back there, but obviously we all know we love those. Overall, Funko's a mixed bag, but you know, I think they still produce quality at the end of the day. Most of the time. But what happens when Funko doesn't make what you want? What if you want more than Funko, like outside of these four, which you already know, or five, which you know what's just coming next anyway? What if you need to make a custom plush? Dong, dong, dong! That was stupid. This time I'm gonna go in the order of games because honestly, if I could tell you what uh, what order I made them in, I couldn't. So uh, here's the order of games of all my Funko customs, or just customs in general. Here's the start from FNAF 2, my long overdue Withered's customs. I adore the Withered's. I think these are great. I think they all encapsulate my personalities of the Withered's perfectly, and I flippin' love them. First up, we have Withered Freddy. I love my Withered Freddy custom. I think he looks fantastic. His derpy little face is one I could die for. He has detail withering around his arms, legs, his head. You know, uh, buttons that are glued on. And honestly, I think I definitely need to touch up in some areas. But, you know, other than that, I think this one still holds up pretty well. Next up is Wither Bonnie. And while I think he has some glue stains, I think overall his pattern and design looks really nice. He looks exactly how I'd want Funko to make a Wither Bonnie. Not too detailed, but not too under detailed either. But like I said, it's not perfect. There's certainly areas I could have touched up on. Hence, he still has a cotton tail. And Toy Bonnie doesn't. Uh, then we've got Withered Chica, which is definitely my least, I'd say, polished one. But other than that, I think it still looks good in design-wise. I think I definitely overcolored the bib, but, but other than that, I think the withering, the hands, and the mouth overall look pretty good. And then we have what was my long overdue, but finally do Withered Foxy. I think Withered Foxy looks really, really nice, and I think pretty much exactly how I'd imagine Funko would do him. 
And I can't even stay outside of the hook now because they're doing hooks for these things. I gave him more hairs, just like in the game. I gave him iron feet that I just took from a Nightmare Foxy. His withering's all there. He's got extra teeth. His broken ears there. All his withering's just all over him. And you know, I like this guy. I like this guy a lot. I think objectively Foxy's my favorite, but I think subjectively Bonnie's my favorite. Flash the definitions for both those words up screen. But we can't forget Withered Golden Freddy, who I actually got from my friend Super Laser Guy. So uh, go subscribe to him. I blew a hair off my screen. I'm just gonna cut that out. Only thing that was wrong about this flush when I got it was it was had hot glue on the hat, but you know, you can't really see that when I'm filming, so it doesn't really bug me. I just sort of added a bunch of marks onto him. He had his broken eye, he has his broken ear. That's basically what Golden Wither Golden Freddy is, and the funny thing is I don't actually own a normal Funko Golden Freddy. I mean, I didn't own a normal Funko of any of these guys until like six months ago when I decided to pick up all those duplicates, but... Yeah, well, we're here now. Who could forget, though, Bonnie's face? I mean, what else were you expecting, really? I love how it looks utterly ugly on the plushie, though, because it's just like... It's just not meant to be. Next up we have Endo 2, which is supposed to be Scorch, that, which is exactly what I made it for in FNAF Watch Endless Inferno. Oops, spoilers! That's exactly why he has a broken eye. But you know, let's just say I wanted to give this Endo Skeleton a little more personality. And then we've got Shadow Bonnie. Uh, yeah, this one's not good. It's flat, it was one of the first customs I made that was out of, you know, not paper, uh, you know, paper, and also wasn't, you know, just a modification of another plushie. So let's just show my infinitely superior one. <laughs> this is basically just me covering a normal Bonnie and felt. You can kind of see it appear in some spots and I definitely need to polish it up. But overall, I'm extremely proud of this thing. Minus a couple of glue stains and spots I need to fix up. I think this guy looks fantastic. Looks exactly what I'd want out of a Shadow Bonnie plush. A bunch of teeth, a bunch of big white beady eyes and his bow tie and he's just completely covered in black. Also, he has his little cotton tail still, so actually accurate on like toybot and then we have one that hasn't actually appeared in any videos yet cake bear from the fnaf 2 mini games why did i make this i don't know i felt like it he's very cool i just kind of made him exactly like how the sprite is no ears the big golden like crazy looking eyes and his mouth and his buttons this is a fun guy to make and last but not least from fnaf 2 the purple guy this is the one I use in Endless Inferno, and you know what? I think he looks good considering all things are dirty. I think he holds up really well today. He's pretty perfect, honestly. Purple guy. <laughs> Next up, we move to FNAF 3, which admittedly is a really small collection. First up, Phantom Mangle. I used this in one video, and she hasn't returned since. I think I kept up the trend of them all being dogs in that video, but I might be wrong. I don't think this really looks like how Funko would do it, obviously, especially since now that we have Phantom BB, but, you know, it's Phantom Mangle. But, uh, hopefully one day I'll be proven wrong and we'll get, uh, more Phantom plushies. Hopefully. And also one that I don't think has been shown in a video, but this is where the fate of my original Spring Bonnie went. It's Withered Spring Bonnie. I wanted to try something different and unique with this guy, and while I think the eye was an odd choice, I think it still looks cool. I tried to replicate the withering on the original Springtrap plushie the best I could, while still keeping features of Spring Bonnie. If you do match this up with the original Springtrap plush, you can tell that the withering is similar, but I still kept some characteristics that would make sense. So yeah, there's Withered Spring Bonnie. And you're like, fuck tree! She's not in FNAF 3! Yes, she is. There she is. We don't actually see Wizard Spring Bonnie outside of this, actually. Next up is FNAF 4! So, to start off FNAF 4, we have... Nightmare Chica, which is so strange, considering they still have yet to make a Nightmare Chica. This, I think, was actually my first ever custom plush that wasn't made out of paper, because I made it a really, really long time ago. And it has had many, many revisions over the years, and I think I've finally come to a satisfying one. It looks good, it looks like Nightmare Chica, and it looks unique. And aside from the mouth being ginormous, I think it looks nice. Though, considering now that we have Jacko Chica on the way, I think it's safe to say we might have a Nightmare Chica on the way as well. And then we have a newer addition to the collection, Nightmare Fredbear. Now, you're probably wondering, why does he just a Freddy? And I know that sounds weird, and I know you're probably like, he just looks like the brown Fredbear from Help Wanted. I don't care. Frankly, I didn't want to try and replicate the patterns. I just think that's a really hard task, and also, it's kind of hard to tell that this isn't yellow. 
Nightmare Fredbear is already kind of a darker shade of yellow, orangish color, and I think this is honestly close enough. Plus, I think the browns make the, you know, light parts pop out more. Other than that, though, this is Nightmare Fredbear. It's pretty much exactly how I think he'd come out. He got all the stuff on his stomach, all the stuff, his big old bow tie, his teeth, and his eyes. I'm so happy I have a real Funko looking Nightmare Fredbear now because it was really hard using that weird custom I had before for so long. And then we have still Plus Trap. I think this is my first really decent attempt at recreating the Funko style. Uh, you know, it still holds up pretty well even today. Even if I don't use Plus Trap anymore, I think he's in the sewers. I don't really remember, but he's somewhere down there. Outside of not having learned the ability to flip inside out the fabric, which makes just better shapes, this is a good looking plushie. And last but not least, we have Nightmarion, which I made from a Good Stuff puppet. And let me tell you, I think this plush has decent design choices, but I'm not gonna lie when I say it is quite frankly poor in quality. I mean, there's just glue stains all over this thing, for Pete's sake. It's a lot of the reason why I don't use Nightmarion in videos, but you know. I think for what it is, it looks okay. Might retouch up on it one day, though. Next up is FNAF Sister Location. Here's Mini Rena. Uh, it's just a kind of a placeholder custom. I didn't really put too much effort into this thing. It's really just a flat sack of nothing. But you know what? It's Mini Rena, and it does its purpose. I might remake Mini Rena one day, just for the fun of it. And then we have Handy Unit. This is actually a remake of the paper plush that I had back all the way in Ballora's Nose Surgery that reappeared in, uh... Funtime Freddy's brother, so go watch both of those videos. And I came back with a voice effect and all. This is fun. I like handy in it. And then we have Unmasked Ennard, which is what I used, I think, the Ennard head for? I don't know why I made this. I don't know, maybe I just had an extra Ennard lying around and I felt like making Unmasked Ennard, which, you know, it's a really nice plush. I like Unmasked Ennard and I think it looks really nice overall. This was actually the first time I attempted to sew a plush together. The head is sewed, which was certainly different for me. I think it was a pretty good first attempt. Though most of my modern customs are still made fully with hot glue. Even glitch trap. Then we got Yendo, which was a fun video. He's just a Freddy cover in a bunch of gray fabric made to look like Yendo. And I think he serves his purpose. And then we've got Michael Afton, which appeared exclusively in the sister location below the surface remix video I did. It's not the greatest custom ever, especially since I made the legs all flappy and flat. But other than that, I like him. It's Michael, so, you know. What else can you really expect? And last but not least, since Dark Springtrap is technically a canonic character, here's what I guess would be considered Dark Springtrap. It's Ignited Springtrap, that one model made by Fails, but you know, it's, it's, you know. I think I did a really good job on this custom considering it was one of my earlier ones. It's basically just the Springtrap that appears at the end of FNAF 3 after the fire. It's got a bunch of purple guy guts on him, his broken arm, he's got all this stuff everywhere broken face. Now, if I were to make this nowadays, I wouldn't base it off of this. I would base it off of a combination of Dark Spring Trap, what I think Dark Spring Trap wouldn't look like if he was ridiculously goofy, and the in between between Scrap Trap and, you know, Spring Trap. But you know what? I still like him. And I don't really think I want to let you know if I want to remake him anyway. That's good. Next up, we have Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator, so let's jump into that. I made these mostly just to fill in the holes that I felt were missing, so starting off with Scrap Baby. Whoa, wait a minute, this isn't your Scrap Baby custom, you're right, it's a new one. I wanted to try and replicate the styles of all the help wanted, my own interpretation, and how I think Funko would make Scrap Baby. And honestly, this is subjectively my favorite Scrap Baby custom ever. I just think it looks exactly like something Funko would make, while also being my own style with a couple extra details that I don't think Funko would do. She's got her roller skates, she's got her skirt, She's got her body, all the broken parts on her, she's got her claw, and she's got a really well done face. I think I've certainly improved on Sharpie coloring. Also, the hair just looks really nice. This is really good. I love this scrap, baby. And then, also a brand new custom, never before seen, Molten Freddy. I adore this Molten Freddy custom so much. I just think it was a super fun plushie to make, and yes, I had a bunch of extra entered limbs lying around, so I made him. He's got his old squid body down here, a bunch of entered eyes, and you know, uh, the right colors this time. He's not red, he's actually a rusted orange like he is in the game. All his teeth, both his uh, dotted out eyes with gray around him. The back of his head is actually like entered colored and not just more fun type Freddy head. This, I think, is subjectively 
really like subjectively the best Molten Freddy custom. I just really love this guy, and I really hope I see more people make ones like this in the future. But I don't blame you if you don't, considering the fact you need a Funtime Freddy and two Ennards to make exactly what I did here. I'll just provide a quick little tutorial. This is just Ennard's arms and body. This is just Funtime Freddy's head. I did nothing more than color over the back of his head, put a new piece of felt here. This is all just replacing felt and stuff. In his body, I just cut out part of Ant my, the, one of the entered bodies. I attached his leg. These are uh, these are both legs. These are also uh, these are both arms, and these are both more legs. So two arms, and then four legs in the front. And then these are just all the extra entered eyeballs you'll have. So yeah, a lot of money went into this, but you know what? I think overall, it's just a really nice custom. And then we have Scrap Trap, the only surviving of the three that uh, hasn't been completely replaced. I still think that this custom holds up quite well, mostly because Scrap Trap is the least changed, I think. Obviously, it has been updated since my first one, and it's just been redone and revised, and overall, I think it still holds up well. A couple things that changed if I were to remake this, I'd ditch the pipe cleaners, I just think they look strange. And also, I think I'd just kinda undergo the withering, it's just a little too much in my opinion. Other than that, I think it looks nice. Next up is Nedbear. Um, I made this guy for funsies, and he's not good looking. I actually used my old Rockstar Freddy custom for this guy, and he just looks kind of dumb. But you know what? I just wanted Nedbear. I don't care about Nedbear all that much. I'm sorry for all you Nedbear fans out there, but hey, I made him at all. Also, to that one guy that's asking for Rockstar Bonnie, I, uh, one day. It's Funtime Chica, and this is actually the first custom where I really had to go ambitious with it. And honestly, the first one looked terrible. The second revision, not as bad, but still not great either. I think overall this guy looks... Gal, you know, guy, gal, whatever. This, this, this one looks okay. I think that this definitely does not look as clean as it should. There's, the head is a decent shape, but you know, I really only just flipped out the old head and just put a new one and just, you know, pretended it was a new head. It had eyelashes, but they fell off, so uh, I'll have to reattach those someday. It serves its purpose. And combining that with Funtime Cupcake, which I think was in the uh, Valentine's Day special a couple years back, quote me if I'm wrong. It's Funtime Cupcake. I didn't, I rushed this one. This is definitely rushed for the video, but you know, it's, it was more meant to be, uh, you know, a part of the Sanchi look rather than the Funko look, which is why it's so small. Okay, it's time for the moment you've all been waiting for, my best custom ever, number one crate. No words, he's awesome. Nah, I'm just kidding. As much as I love number one crate, I think he's amazing. Egg Baby! I've made him so infamous. The God of Nut has arrived. I've made him so infamous for so many people. Me and Furky both have contributed to this character back and forth between our videos. And you know what? I still love this stupid idiot. I made a arbitrarily lore-related character, oddly enough, into a complete meme. And you know what? His symbolism is now the God of Nut, and not dead children being transferred into Funtime robots, which... Uh, I'll do a lore video one day, because I've got really hot takes on FNAF! Now we're moving on to, I guess, Era 2 of FNAF? Post FNAF 6, Help Wanted, Fazbear Frights, and FNAF AR. I'm not doing another introduction like this, because I'm tired of moving this specific plushie. Goodbye! Oh yeah, also security breach. All right, starting off with the main man of the hour, Glitch Trap. My first one, frankly, sucked, but I really like my second one. I think he looks really good, and considering he's specifically all made out of hot glue shapes, and a lot of people, when I tell them that, they're like, what? There's no way you made that with hot glue. And I tell them, yes, it's possible. It's when you uh, train the fine arts. I have much knowledge and wisdom. I'm gonna be honest here. I don't even know if Funko would make this better than I could. Plus design wise, maybe not quality wise, because you know, this is still just random mo fabric. I hope that if Funko makes one, it looks like this. I think I achieved the face pretty dang well. Especially in a plush form that doesn't look arbitrarily strange. And then we have decapitation. This is my first version of Vanny that I decapitated. And honestly, considering we only had that mask, I think I did a decent job of replicating her. Uh, I didn't think they'd go for the handmade suit vibe outside of like, just being glitch trap again, but with the calico rabbit. What do you call this kind of rabbit? I may be wrong. Dude, dude, put the kind of rabbit. Yeah, I, I decapitated it as, as a symbolism for taking off her suit. So yeah, this this custom is no longer a uh, feel. And then we have one that I also don't think has been shown to the public eye yet. Here it is. It's uh, this is I made this around help when help wanted uh, got first got revealed. This is based off of the teaser image. I started this actually before the Spring Bonnie got removed from it, so that's why Spring Bonnie's there, and that's also the reason I never finished it. 
You can actually see where I started Bonnie and Foxy in the back here, but I just never got around to it. I may come back and finish this someday, but it, I don't know what I'd really use it for. I just kind of made it for fun. So yeah, uh, there's that. And then we have Dreadbear, which is just kind of, uh, again, another really rushed custom. Mostly just supposed to be like a Hulk and weird looking guy. And yeah, let's be honest here, the official one looks amazing and I love how stupid he looks, but we're not going to get into that right now. Here's Dreadbear. I love him. I'm a, now I made him an opening mouth. Uh, he looks scary. He was in my Halloween video for 2019. I like Dreadbear. And then we have what my depiction of Vanessa was for a long time. This custom was rushed, very, very rushed, considering it was only used for Slime Pie's Monsters collab part, and you only really saw it for a little bit. Uh, yeah, that's that's about it. It's badly made. It's yeah, I mean, it's a depiction of Vanessa. Um, this design isn't even close. This isn't close to either of the canon designs we've been given off. Well, either of the canon designs. At least, very least, we know she had rainbow hair at some point. I don't know if that's been changed. I don't know. FNAF A-Hard and FNAF the Security Breach are weird, man. I don't know. I will find Ken Venny's canon design when the game comes out, I guess. And I guess I have to include this because it's a part of the Help Wanted mobile port, but here is Monster Glitch Trap. What would you really call this? I don't know. I just made this for lore and purposes, and I think it looks really good. It's achieved its purpose of being a giant scary glitch trap monster. And it looks pretty accurate to what was in the game. Alright, next up I'm gonna do Fazbear Frights. It's only a couple select plushies. First up is Freddy from Count the Ways. I had a whole bunch of fun making this guy. He's based off of E. Breddy's model that was used in the official Doco animation, and I think that this thing just looks really nice, and uh, overall is just a really good plushie. Uh, he has opening chest plate, which is fun for video to make. He also has up and down eyebrows, and uh, his hat opens and closes, and he's got a bunch of wires on his hand where Bon Bon would be. I used this in both my Count the Ways music video and in the... Uh, Front of Freddy's brother, so go check those both out. Speaking of the fun, the Count the Ways music video, here's Millie I used in that video. This is definitely the style of the uh, female plushie I want to go with for going forward. Uh, it actually has had a little bit of damage to it since that video was filmed, but other than that, I still think this plushie looks really good. And then we have Fetch. This one was just a little more simple, considering it was just supposed to be dog-sized, and it will appear in videos with the nightmares more, considering Fetch will consider just be Nightmare Foxy's dog going on forward, and he'll have this little doggy for his little relationship. He's got his tag, his battery pack, and, uh, yeah, that's what Fetch looks like. And then last spot, not least, Hide and Seek Shadow Bonnie. Now, I know I got comments about my video saying I claimed to be XOR when that was actually Shadow Dee Dee. I knew that. I just wanted to give me a unique name rather than just hash hide and seek Shadow Bonnie, and I want to just clarify this also. This is not Howard, aka the Shadow Bonnie that was in videos. That would technically be re representing Shadow Bonnie, but I used it in the video because it was my updated custom. Uh, he can just disguise as whatever entity he sees, which is why he looked like Shadow Bonnie, and that will be explained later. Uh, that is still, whenever I, if you ever see Howard in a video again, slash Shadow Bonnie, that will be what he looks like. And that is not him. That is just the disguise he used. This is what XOR truly looks like. Uh, I don't think I needed to really clarify that since I think you kind of connect the dots in the video, but you know, I just wanted to make sure that everyone cares, cares, and knows. Next up we have uh, characters from FNAF AR Special Delivery, and uh, I think we're gonna go in order of what these characters when, when they were revealed, I guess. So first one is Shamrock Freddy. This was extremely rushed. Uh, for that time of era of custom, this looks pretty bad. I did this mostly for the video. I think I literally made it the day before I filmed, so it, like, didn't have much time to sit. I mean, being Shamrock Friday, it's got all the details. It just is uh, very uneven and strange looking. Yeah, we've got Toxic Spring Trap on the other side of the spectrum. I think this looks like something Funko would make. I think it, I actually used a Mr. Hippo, which I was initially had. It was going to be a custom of, you know, um, what is I'm gonna call him? The fake purple guy that I just switched over to Toxic Springtrap because I didn't really think I'd use that for anything. I honestly might go back and make that custom again, but right now he's Toxic Springtrap, and honestly, I think he looks great. He looks exactly like I think Funko would make him outside of maybe being a little too detailed, but it was for a video, so I think he looks nice. And then we have the characters from the Dark Circus. First up is Ringmaster Foxy. I actually kind of forgot what I called all these guys in the video, but I know I called Clown Trap Clown Trap, so that's at least something. He's equipped with his whip, his coat, 
His head is actually decently replicated, and you know, he's just all around a really good video, a really good plushie from a really good video. I still really love that Halloween special. I think it's my, befa my best Halloween special I've done. And then we have Magician Mangle with her little tiny endo head, and you know, honestly, this one looks good. It doesn't really look like a FNAF plushie, but you know, it's still isn't that style. I think her snoot is very long, which you know, is kind of funny, all things considered. Gave her the electric eye, gave her, you know, the little magician with the little wand and the rabbit ears and all that mess. Good. And then we got Clown Trap, probably my favorite of the three. I used an actual clown nose for this thing, like one you foam one you'd buy at the store. I just shaved it down to be FNAF plushy size. I just think he looks really dumb, and I think that's why I like him. He's big, bulky, and dumb looking. And, you know, I think he was fun to make. Then we have Black Ice Frost Bear, which was in my Frost Bear's Winter Wonderland video. Uh, this is just a Freddy covered in blue felt. But this one was mostly just rushed. I was gonna originally just get a frost bear, another one, to make this black ice frost bear custom with, but I couldn't find one at the store, and I didn't feel like spending another $40, $30 on another one and order it just for this video. So I just uh, sucked up my gut and I uh, just bought another fretting covered in blue felt, which to be fair, it would have been just snowed anyway, so yeah. Hey, last but not least, oddly enough, it came in the video before that plushie came into a video, but there's Heartsick Valentine Baby. She suffered a little bit of damage with her bow being, like, destroyed, kind of, with the string, which really sucks, but, yeah, whatever. Uh, I think it was a decent replication of Baby, but I think it was also one that was kind of rushed for the video, though she was a fun plush. Alright, last but not least for the game order, we have the FNAF Security Breach plushies. First up, we have Glamrock Freddy. This one was back before the original plushies got revealed, and honestly, I like him, but I think this is the last remnant of what I think I did wrong with a lot of my customs. Too overly detailed. It just doesn't look like something Funko would make, and on top of the fact that it's based off the calendar design, which was, I think was a very early concept, I don't like it. Don't get me wrong, great quality plushie for me, a good custom at that, it's just not consistent. Now, that's definitely the reason why I chose not to make the rest of them. Now, something that is called consistent, Vanessa. Here's Vanessa, the night guard from FNAF Security Breach. Is she Vanny? Is she not? I don't know. We'll have to see. And honestly, I kind of jumped the gun with doing that thing at the end of Sun and Moon. But, you know, I'll have to see when I do. I'll figure out a way around it if it's not the way the game goes. So, yeah, she's uh, equipped with everything about her. I mean, she's got her head, her body. I wanted to go for the Funko Super Cute style, if you know what those plushies look like, and gave him no legs. Her head is nice and round, and she's got her ponytail on the back, her night guard cap, and overall, I think she looks just like her, and I think it's a really good representation. It fits right alongside the rest of the Funko plushies. And next we have Moondrop. I love this guy. Look at Moondrop. He's all happy. He's got his moon face, his moon cap. He looks nice and plumpy and fluffy. I just really love Moondrop. I think I did a great job on this custom overall. Same goes with Sunrise. I also really love this custom. I didn't make it based off the animatronic in the game. Rather, I made it based off all the art and concept art, because really, I don't really know what's going to happen with Sunrise in the game. Is it going to be relevant? Does it just look like that in the game? I like this look more, because it contrasts with Moondrop more, and it just looks better. So there's all my canon ones. Now I'm going to move on to some OCs. First one I can't actually show you because it's not with me anymore, but it has been modified into the next two plushies. Here is Scorchbot, or technically just a re re remade version of Scorch. My original FNAF character that was based off of the ending of the fourth closet. It's the sort of molten metal amalgamation that pulled Afton into the fire. And that's kind of what he's based off of in the, in my story, but it's not quite all that even. You'd have to look into it to find out what his character is like. You basically just gotta watch some videos in my season three, then Listen Inferno, and then one or two episodes of Invade the Plush first. One of those two not being out yet. So yeah, I really like Scorch. He was a very fun character and a very experimental one. And then here is Return Scorch. He's back from the Endless Inferno. He's a ghost. He's on fire, and he's. This is actually used the original Scorch Head, which is the exact reason why I think it holds better sentimental value. That's how he is. And, you know, I had an uncannon moment, a cannon that moment that was retconned where he came back. And you know what? I'm just gonna say that that was a hallucination from the next character, Goldie, semi based on Golden Call. I promise he'll show up in videos again. It's just he hasn't been too relevant to the plot at the moment, but I promise he'll show up at some point. 
you didn't know my series, he is actually possessed by the phone guy. You'll have to find out why in the future. He's based off Golden Call from Dormitibus, though. I, I mentioned he was based off Golden Call, but I didn't mention where Golden Call is from. And then we have... Glitched Corrupted Shadow Freddy, whatever you want to call it. I made this guy for fun because I wanted a big monster at the end of the movie, and I think it worked out for Shadow Freddy's character arc overall. R.I.P. And I'm just gonna throw this one in for funsies. Here is Mrs. Mozzarella. You'll have to see what episode that's for in the future. And with that, my hands are cramping, I'm tired, and this is my entire FNAF Plus collection as of the summer of 2021. I wanted to do a video where I went more in-depth with my FNAF Plus collection since I see like I just kind of skip past everything in those videos. My big plush collections at least, which is the exact reason I did an updated one instead of a full one. Also because I'd be a pain to have to pull all these out. Let me know what your favorite plush and your least favorite one are in the comments, what I can do better for the future of my customs, and you know, all in and all around. Also, what's your favorite Funko plushie? Heck, we'll just separate Funko and, uh, customs, since that's quite literally what I did right here. But overall, uh, I hope everyone has a fantastic day, because I am very tired. Peace out, everybody!